One of the world's most opulent, prosperous, and contemporary cities is Dubai. It draws travelers from all over the world in addition to business people. You'll want to visit this paradise again and again after you've been there. I'm going to provide you a list of some of the most fascinating and astounding facts about Dubai. Have fun as you watch. As we previously stated, Dubai has developed at an unprecedented rate, going from a fishing town to an affluent metropolis. According to many experts, Dubai's success story might not last for long. The city is sometimes likened to a soap bubble that rapidly expands and catches people's attention with its shimmering iridescence, only to shatter just as soon. These arguments, of course, make sense. Dubai's economy grew in 2023, although at a slower rate than it did at the height of its expansion, according to figures. This delay could be a precursor to a final income level decline, but these are only predictions. Moreover, a much lower percentage of specialists share this opinion. The majority of people still think that Dubai will rank among the richest cities in the world for a very long time. It is erroneous to believe that oil is the exclusive source of Dubai's wealth. Undoubtedly, this natural resource contributed to the United Arab Emirates' economic success. It's notable, though, that the municipal government showed common sense and practicality. They did not decide to concentrate only on producing oil. Rather, they made completely different investments with the proceeds. The income levels are lower in Abu Dhabi, the capital city of the United Arab Emirates, which has a lot more oil reserves than Dubai. This is due to the fact that investments, real estate, business ventures, and tourism currently constitute Dubai's primary revenue streams. I think the local government made the right decision in utilizing oil as a development catalyst. Natural resources will eventually run out, but Dubai's reputation as a wealthy metropolis is cemented in stone. One could regard the Burj Khalifa as a contemporary marvel of the globe. With a height of 828 meters, it currently retains the record. It's interesting to note that a Saudi Arabian prince vowed to create a building that would be 1.5 times taller than the Burj Khalifa after it was built. However, work on that project was put on hold in 2018. The world's highest skyscraper is still the one in Dubai. September 2004 marked the start of Burj Khalifa construction, which was finished in January 2010. At the opening ceremony, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum revealed that the skyscraper will be named after Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the former president of the United Arab Emirates, who made a substantial contribution to Dubai's success. Originally, the tower was going to be called Burj Dubai. The Burj Khalifa is a singular skyscraper that breaks records for more than just height. Here are a few fascinating details about its attributes. The tower weighs the same as 100,000 elephants, and has a surface area equal to 17 football fields. Importantly for the area, a unique variety of concrete that absorbs less heat from the sun was employed in the construction process. With views from 555 meters above ground, the Burj Khalifa is home to the highest observation deck. The complete cleaning of the building takes three months. The project took about $1.5 billion to complete. Presently, the tower contains 900 residential units offices, a cafeteria, a gym, an observatory, and opulent apartments in addition to the Armani Hotel. With good reason, Dubai is regarded as one of the Middle East's top shopping destinations. The Dubai Mall is one of the most well-liked locations for entertainment and shopping. The Dubai Mall occupies more than 1 million square meters while having just four stories, contrary to what you may assume if you've never been there. With more than 1,200 stores, you may find almost anything in this hub, from things made locally to international brands. In addition to retail spaces, Dubai Mall offers a plethora of entertainment options for guests. Here you may unwind in an indoor theme park, bring the kids to an educational and amusement center, see a new film in a contemporary theater, or even ice skate. The local aquarium at Dubai Mall simply astounds visitors. It is undoubtedly among the biggest in the world. You can spend hours viewing the lives of 33,000 marine fish and other creatures in this massive aquarium, which holds more than 10 million gallons of water. One could describe Dubai Mall as an entire metropolis that never gets dull. Rich people who own practically everything 
choose to adopt wild animals as pets. Amazingly, the native inhabitants of the United Arab Emirates were able to tame and affectionately tame these animals. In other countries, snakes, lizards, and spiders are regarded unusual pets. Yet, cheetahs, lions, and tigers are very popular pets in Dubai. Envision a high-end sports vehicle passing by with a big wild cat glaring through the glass. This was not simply a scene from a movie. Until recently, sheikhs in Dubai could actually experience it. But in 2017, the government of the United Arab Emirates outlawed the individual ownership of big, dangerous animals. This choice preserved the rights of wild animals while also guaranteeing the population's protection. These animals would fare much better in their own environment, after all. The government of Dubai made the wise decision to pleasantly surprise the citizens of the Emirates with a kind campaign encouraging weight loss. A person could win significant gifts and two grams of gold for every kilogram lost. As is well known, a lot of individuals battle with being overweight globally, frequently as a result of poor diets that are heavy in sugar and carbs. The authorities in Dubai believed that it was useless to invest money on social media advertising because this tried-and-true strategy rarely yields results. They therefore developed their motivational concept. Under the theme, Your Weight in Gold, the competition made its debut in 2013. The project's organizers made a small modification the following year and opened it up to families with overweight kids. In addition, the incentive to reduce weight is quadrupled if every family member struggles with weight. Around 30,000 applications were received for the contest after this proposal was warmly received. Nevertheless, the majority were denied because the children's weight was normal. Every year, some 7,000 people take part in the program. Ahmed Al Sheikh, a male, holds the record for the most weight lost in three months. He lost 26 kilograms. It's difficult to imagine Dubai 20 years ago when there was essentially nothing there. There used to be a fishing village where opulent skyscrapers currently exist. However, how did a tiny village become a major city? The explanation is straightforward. Oil is the key. The development of the city was financially supported by this natural resource. Though oil reserves can be found all across the world, only the United Arab Emirates, and especially Dubai, can claim such riches. The issue is that when oil extraction started in Dubai in the late 1960s, the government of the nation created a brilliant plan that was effective. The plan was to establish a special grouping for the wealthiest members of the global elite. The idea behind Dubai was to create a luxurious city where the world's wealthiest individuals would want to visit and spend their money on the services provided. Because of this, the city's infrastructure is unmatched. Dubai appears to be pricey. There are wealthy sheikhs living there, rare sports cars cruising the streets, and everything you could ever want in the retail and entertainment complexes. The white sands of the desert and the magnificent Persian Gulf scenery are just added bonuses. The local government succeeded in turning this place into a paradise. It should be noted that oil just provided a cash boost. These days, the treasury receives only 7% of its total revenue from black gold. The remaining portion comes from services and involvement in various commercial endeavors. It's possible that you've heard that Dubai has no taxes, but that's not totally accurate. In Dubai, as in other cities across the world, value-added tax is paid by all citizens. A 4% registration fee and property transfer tax must be paid when purchasing any type of real estate. There are no inheritance or gift taxes. Because there are no corporation taxes in the United Arab Emirates, business people have long been drawn to the country. However, this is no longer the case. The Emirates implemented the lowest corporation tax rate in the world, 9% on profits, on June 1, 2023. This tax is necessary to be paid by all businesses that operate within the nation. The authorities reached this decision for a number of reasons. The primary motivation is, of course, to raise national revenue. Furthermore, the lack of taxes may be interpreted as a chance for illicit gain, harming the Emirates' reputation. To bring the tax system into compliance with international norms is another justification for their introduction. Investor attraction will not be impacted by this move. Dubai is home to the Miracle Garden, a veritable desert oasis. 
The beauty of this place captivates everyone at first glance. Take a look at how stunning it is. The park's 72,000 square meter expanse was unveiled in 2013. Approximately 50 million flowers call it home. These flowers are included in a variety of compositions rather than just being in beds. Just think of the work required to develop such a magnificent garden in the middle of nowhere. Disney figures may be seen in the park, along with colorful alleyways and a life-sized Airbus A380 flowery airliner. Even if you've been here previously, you can still come back the next year to see the new pieces, which are changed every year. The park usually opens in November and closes in the summer since the blooms can't survive Dubai's intense heat. There are two official Guinness World Records held by Miracle Garden. The Mickey Mouse sculpture is regarded as the largest topiary in the world, while the plain model is acknowledged as the greatest floral arrangement. Dubai astonishes visitors with an array of amusement offerings. An ATM that delivers gold bars instead of cash is another amazing attraction meant for those with extra cash. In terms of value stability, gold is still one of the most stable precious metals today. Although the days of paying with gold have undoubtedly passed, it continues to act as a global reserve asset. The fact that almost all of the world's leading banks maintain a sizable amount of this precious metal in reserve serves as proof of this. Gold bar ATMs are widely distributed throughout Dubai. Purchasing precious metal is not hard. Simply place your bank card into the ATM and adhere to the on-screen directions. It should be noted that gold is available here not only in massive ingots, but also in little bits starting at one gram. It should be mentioned that purchasing this precious metal in Dubai is highly advantageous because there are no government regulations controlling the price of gold in the United Arab Emirates. Dubai is home to more than 3.2 million people, according to the most recent population census. You're wrong if you believe they are all Arabs. Approximately 85% of the population is made up of immigrants from various nations. The UN claims that the number of migrants in the Emirates is at an all-time high, a fact that may surprise you. But they are economic migrants, not refugees. About 900,000 of these individuals are from Egypt, 800,000 are from Pakistan, and the majority are from India. Many people are aware of the benefits of residing in the United Arab Emirates. Only native inhabitants, or Arabs, who make up only 15% of the population, are eligible for all of these privileges. However, why should they distribute all of their nation's wealth to foreigners who primarily offer full service in the service industry? This is not about violating someone's rights. Immigrants are paid well for their labor and are free to run their own businesses, while locals are exempt from regular labor and are eligible for government bonuses. Horse races come to mind when we think of races involving riders. On the other hand, robots ride the camels at comparable competitions held in the United Arab Emirates in place of human participants. In the Emirates, camel racing is a national sport and a popular spectacle. So why were people replaced by machines with programming? Jockeying camels is far more difficult than riding horses, since the rider must carry a minimum amount of weight to prevent discomfort and resistance to control. It's interesting to note that Arabs came up with a solution by employing kids as riders for show. Still, not every parent would consent to their child participating in an activity that requires them to manage such a wild animal. Regrettably, this resulted in kidnappings of children in less developed Emirates regions. Authorities devised an incredible approach to put an end to this violence, building robots that could serve as riders. The idea was taken on by the Swiss Business K-Team in 2003, and the first robot batches, called Command, were saddling the humps within a few years. Since this concept was effective, camel racing tournaments are still using lightweight robotic devices as riders. The wealthy can have their wishes fulfilled by the United Arab Emirates. In the vicinity of Dubai, you may even purchase one or more man-made islands for their money. A number of artificial archipelagos have been created close to Dubai's shoreline. The Palm Islands are the name of the first one. It is made up of three sizable palm-shaped islands, Palm Jumeirah, Palm Jebel Ali, and Palm Dera. The archipelago is more than 60 square kilometers in total. 
Four kilometers off the shore of Dubai lies the second artificially constructed archipelago, called the World. 300 tiny islands make up the territory of the world. The archipelago, which has a total area of 55 square kilometers, looks like a map of the world from above. The most expensive island was estimated to have cost $2 billion, while the tiniest and most isolated island cost roughly $7 million, according to accessible sources. But you can't just purchase an island. The world's wealthiest individuals receive sales proposals from the development company. Dubai has a surprising amount of abandoned expensive cars, which surprises a lot of visitors. Are individuals really so rich that they can leave their sports vehicles alone and not even bother to sell them? This is partially accurate. Residents do occasionally abandon their cars in the desert, although this usually occurs following collisions. It makes no sense to repair and sell the identical Lamborghini in Dubai. But there are other reasons why individuals give up their cars. The truth is that bankruptcy and other instances of non-payment of debt are illegal under the rules of the Emirates. A person in this circumstance could actually go to jail. People from foreign nations prefer to return home as soon as possible after opening a failed firm in Dubai, for example. They may regret leaving the fancy car behind, of course, but it's better than going to jail. At Dubai, these vehicles can be seen at a variety of locations, including landfills, hotels, and the city's periphery. Their owners occasionally ditch their car and leave the ignition keys in the cabin with a message explaining why. Dubai is a popular travel destination due to its extremely low crime rate, in addition to its abundance of amenities, Persian Gulf beaches, and year-round warmth. Interestingly, this rate has been declining annually. This is not because there are a lot of rich individuals living in the city, quite the opposite. Numerous foreign workers and businessmen reside in Dubai. They all cherish the chance to make a nice living, and anyone who chooses to commit a crime will not escape punishment. They would not only be imprisoned, but also lose their visa and their chance to return to the Emirates in the future. Why would you lose your lucrative business or employment because of a criminal offense? Since it is nearly hard for anyone to avoid punishment in the Emirates, the rate of crime here is only going down. Therefore, you have nothing to worry about if you and your family decide to have a vacation in Dubai. Even for strolls across the city at night, it is completely safe. The Emirates authorities made the decision to implement a new timetable for the nation's working population as of January 1, 2022. Sunday and Saturday are now regarded as weekends. Thursday used to be a day off rather than Saturday. Though the Emirates work week is comparable to the widely accepted work week, there are several differences as well. On Fridays, citizens in this country only work half a day. This is so because Friday is the day on which Arabs are supposed to pray. Friday is when Muslims pray Jumu'ah, according to the Quran. One of the important developments for the people's way of life and the nation's economy was this innovation. The goal of the authorities was to accommodate both the demands of working Muslims to worship on Fridays and the demands of global markets. As a result, it was agreed to implement a de facto four-day work week for the populace, with a half-day workday on Friday. This choice gave people of different faiths the chance to devote more time to family, travel, and self-education. Not only does Dubai have the tallest skyscraper in the world, but it also has the longest automated metro system. Two years after its September 9, 2009 opening, the metro was inducted into the Guinness World Records. There are 49 stations throughout the 90 kilometers that make up the Dubai metro. It is important to highlight that Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of the Emirate of Dubai, was successful in his goal of creating the most contemporary and pleasant metro. Let's examine the Dubai metro in more detail. Every train in this area is fully automated and the first carriage's front window provides views of the city for all passengers. Contact rail technology allows the trains to run so smoothly and silently. Each station has elevators and escalators on every floor. To avoid falls onto the tracks, platforms feature extra doors that open in unison with the train doors. All stations are kept at a comfortable 20 degrees Celsius constant air temperature. The four features are still present in the modern architecture of the stations and lobbies. There is usually one more comfortable carriage out of five in a train. 
this carriage costs twice as much for a ticket. Before seeing Dubai's beauty, some tourists head to the metro to ride the contemporary trains between the two terminal stations. Did you know there is a real ski resort in Dubai? The officials in the Emirates came up with a solution, albeit it may seem ridiculous considering the city's perpetual summer. They built Ski Dubai inside the Mall of the Emirates. Anyone can enjoy a wintry paradise and escape the hot sun at this facility. The complex is the height of a 25-story building with a surface area of 22,000 square meters and capacity for 1,500 people. It truly is a ski resort. This enormous indoor complex has five different ski runs with different levels of difficulty and elevation, as well as a dedicated area for snowboarders. Fear not if this is your first time downhill. Instructors are on hand to guide you through it safely. At 3,000 square meters, the property also has the biggest indoor snow park in the world. With its wooden homes and real fir trees, the park exudes coziness. A Christmas fairy tale mood is created when the trees are illuminated with garlands in the evening. Furthermore, the actual penguins that call Ski Dubai home enchant adults and kids alike with their gregarious nature. The address system in Dubai is not like that in other nations. There are no house numbers or street names on it. Rather, the emirate employs the Makani system, which is based on a military-style coordinate system. To enable precise position determination, a code has been allocated to each building or individual entry. Plaques with these identification are placed next to each building. Instead of an address, people merely need to take a picture of the code or remember it. In Dubai, Makani made its debut in 2015. Chaos resulted from the lack of addresses prior to its deployment. These codes can now be used by anyone, even postal workers and cab drivers, to quickly find a building. The handy Makani Dubai app is an option for individuals who misplace their code or are unaware of it. It is accessible on both iOS and Android devices. We may find this system strange, but it's incredibly practical. All it takes is a brief code rather than a lengthy address. Dubai is home to 25% of all construction cranes worldwide, earning it the moniker Crane Capital of the Globe. This information highlights the enormous scope of the Emirates building. It's true that Dubai has expanded quickly in front of our eyes, and its construction rate has also been really remarkable. For example, when it was being built, the world's tallest skyscraper was rising two stories every week. In the more than two decades that have passed, Dubai has changed constantly and is now a hive of constant activity. The municipal government's goal of developing a distinctive, opulent metropolis that draws visitors and investors has undoubtedly been accomplished in a startlingly short amount of time. That's all I have to say. Please remember to rate, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell if you enjoyed this video. For me, the greatest reward is your participation. I appreciate you seeing. I'll see you shortly. Farewell. I'll see you.